and welcome to the latest Baggies broadcast fan chat show brought to you by The Express and Star, the place that gives you, the Albion fans, the chance to have your say on your team. My name is Johnny Dreary and as always, I'm joined by three Albion fans to talk about three new topics straight out of the Baggies bag. And tonight, I'm delighted to be joined by Baggies fans Lizzie Hayward, Mike Robertson and Chloe Lane, although you might not be able to hear Chloe. Uh, sorry, you might not be able to see Chloe as you had a few technical issues, but you can certainly hear her loud and clear. So as we always do, we're going to go through three questions. And the first up, um, all we seem to be talking about at the moment as Albion fans, aside from what's going on off the field, is injuries. They've mounted, they've built up. We had, we thought we had two final big blows last week. Today, we found out about another one. Okaya Kushlu, who was out um, after a, an ankle knock on Monday, he will be out of the... Uh, good Friday trip to Rotherham. Uh, hopefully, Carlos Corbran is hoping he'll be back for Monday. Um, Lizzie, I'll come to you first. We've got no no Malumbi, no Okai, who were probably two of the best performers a few weeks ago. Um, with with no Okai, but we obviously know that. Well, assuming that Chalaba will play instead of Malumbi again, with no uh, with no Okai, the Turkish warrior in the middle, who who do you think should be in line to replace him tomorrow? Well, first of all, I think. Okai and Malumbi are going to be huge misses for us. Um, I know Carlos is a huge fan of both of them. Um, I think I saw earlier that since his first game, he's not had, well, he's, he's at least had one of them in the team. Um, so I think with um, both of them being out, there might be Gardner Hickman and Chalaba. I think Gardner Hickman's really good in that role as well. Um, he can do like the Malumbi sort of role get box to box. I know he likes to have a shot on target as well, if he can. Um, but yeah, Gardner Hickman would be my person. Good yeah, Dave, he's, he's an interesting one, isn't he, Dave? Gardner Hickman, you know, fans have seen glimpses of him. They wanted to see more of him. Is this potentially going to be the chance where he might get his chance, a chance for the Albion fans to to see him in that role? Yeah, most definitely. I think um, I think Coventry away last year was a standout performance for, for me where Gardner Hickman, he, he was brilliant. He was everywhere. I think he was man of the match. Um, I think it's a massive opportunity for him as well to, um, you know, potentially get get Friday's game in, and then you know who knows does does, you know, it could it could cause the manager some selection problems if he if he plays well and and does what he does, um, does Gordon Hickman. But it, for for me, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a massive surprise to see Jack, Jack Lee more involved um, at some point on um, on Friday. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's a physical place to go. It's tough. Um, you know, um, I don't think it's any coincidence that he played on uh, Monday night in the reserves. Um, you know, he, the uh, Jed Wallace and others have spoke about how good he's in and around the team, and I think it wouldn't surprise me to see him him in and around it as well. Yeah, that's an interesting interesting take, and certainly on the the, the minutes for the the um, on Monday night for the I think it's the PL two side. I think it's called now. You know. We haven't seen him play them games for, for quite a while, so it'll be interesting to see what does happen. Chloe, what about yourself? Who would you like to see in there? Other contenders, I suppose. Carlos Corbran talks really highly about Adam Reach, although he divides opinion among Albion fans. Um, could you could we potentially see a change in formation, you know, with, with the amount of injuries in there? What 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 do you think about the situation? Um, I think it's come at a pretty bad time of the season, especially having all these injuries and it's typical Albion look, isn't it, really? Um I think, like Lizzie was saying, I could see Taylor going to hit him and I think he's sort of been limited with with his time uh, during Carlos Corbran's time here, you know, in terms of game time. He's not really had his chance and I think this might be his opportunity to try and, you know, give Carlos some things to think about when Yukuslu and um, Malumbi come back from injury. But it wouldn't surprise me to see Livermore come on at some point. Uh, depending on how the game goes with his physicality and, you know, with his experience that he's had as well, I think he won't be a bad contender either, to be honest. I'm sure there'll be a, a massive roar from the away end if Taylor Gardner Rickman is named in the side on Friday, given how the Albion fans feel about him. Second question tonight out of the baggies bag um, is going to be about Eric Peters. Now, Peters did a lengthy interview uh, with the, the local journalists uh, a week or so ago in the, the lengthy break that Albion had. And he spoke about his time at Albion, obviously how we, we know that he came. Fortunately, he was Steve Bruce's neighbour. And that's how he rocked up at the Hawthorns back in back in September, October and whenever it was. He's also spoke about his contract. He, he only signed a 12-month deal. Um, 
Now, we're not sure if talks have, have taken place about um, Peter's renewing a deal, but he has played an awful lot of games this season, so it'll be interesting to see. Dave, I'll come to you first. Is it a case of which league Albion are maybe in next year in terms of whether sort of Peter, Peter stays, given his you know his performances in the Championship this season have been exceptional? Yeah, I think uh, I think that's very much the case. I think if, if we're a Championship side next year, um, he's got to be given a new deal, in my opinion. I think he's... He's solid. Um, he's he's a seven out of ten every week. Um, very rarely gets caught for for pace against anyone, despite him being you know uh, old t- touch of. Um, I'm not going to say he's as good as G Mac, but he's that he's that kind of signing alongside. You know, um, you you can see him him and Dara uh, that they did well together. You could see him and uh, Caleb Taylor potentially playing together as well. Um, should he come back from Cheltenham? And I think you know if. Just, just looking at it, if you were to get three or four Eric Peters type players in and around some of the younger boys we've got next year, that could be, you know, the way forward for us um, with with what's going on uh, at the club at the moment. There's, you know, he's been value for money. He's been a good signing. You know, um, he's, he's probably played more than anyone would expect, and you know, he's been he's been one of our consistent performers for me. Yeah, when you talk about value for money, you're certainly hitting the nail on the head there, Chloe. I'm just going to come to you on this one. We've we've heard repeatedly for quite a while. Albion have had a the, the average age of the squad has been quite high for for a number of years, and we've we've heard various people say it needs to come down. Um, people inside the club, you know, there's been maybe been an effort at times to reduce that. Do you think that may be a factor? I think Peters is maybe 33, 34. Um, Albion have had this sort of tendency to sign or older, more experienced players. Um, what what do you think about that? Do you think that might play a play a factor if he is to get a new deal? Um, potentially, but I think he's, you know, he's formed a good partnership with O'Shea at the back. And I think sometimes it doesn't hurt having the younger ones coming through, learning from more experienced players. And if what we're hearing with all like the player offloading and things like that, if that's the case and we're reliant on more of the younger players, we are going to need some more experienced ones like Peters to help them get to the championship level if that is where we are next season. And just finally on this one, Lizzie, before we come on to our our final question out of the, the baggies bag, um, Dave mentioned Caleb Taylor there. And if you look at the centre-half options beyond this season, you've got Caleb Taylor, obviously Kyle Bartley triggered a contract extension earlier this season. Shemi Ajayi will still be in contract. Dara O'Shea, um, obviously club captain, is still in contract. There are a lot of options in there, sort of young younger options, not, not more experienced. But do you think that might play a part in the in the thinking behind the scenes at Albion as well, given the the sort of different options Albion will have in their next season? I think it will because um obviously with all the money situation, they've got to be careful about what wages they're they're going to be paying. Um my feeling is that Peters is the most experienced and he's done so well alongside O'Shea and he's that good leader leadership figure to have for Taylor and um, yeah, it's just the, the others that probably won't be playing as many minutes because of injuries. And Bartley's obviously had a couple of injuries. Um, a Jay's form can be a bit hit and miss, uh, whereas Peters is more solid. Um, so I think it would be a good idea to keep him on personally. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that one that one plays out. I'm sure we'll know more in the in the coming months. Certainly on the back of the. The playoff race. And finally, uh, the club accounts came out yesterday. That's been the big story out of Albion this week. And the contents of them is makes for tough read. And I certainly read through all three club accounts last night and I needed to lie down after them. So we're not going to go through them with a fine tooth comb. But what has been a fallout from the club accounts is that Albion, we knew that Albion might have to sell in the summer. From reading it, it's pretty certain that they're going to have to maybe sell a few players this summer. So... What assets do, do Albion have? You know, we've heard it said before that Carlos Corbran is probably Albion's most valuable asset at the moment. But in terms of players, I'll come to you first, Chloe. If if Albion were in a position in the summer, which they, they more than likely will be, that they have to sell, who for you in that Albion squad holds the most value? Um, who, who could they get the most money for? Um, I'd say probably... Jed Wallace, I think Thomas Asante surprised a lot of clubs as well um, from how little we've spent on him and the performance that we've, you know, the return on investment almost that we've got back from him. Um, I think those two are probably the standouts for me that we have that we could probably make the money on if we have to get rid of them. Yeah, that's an interesting, interesting take. Lizzie, in terms of, it'll, we don't know how much money if Albion do have to sell that they're going to have to bring in. 
Uh, we've, we've heard various different things, but we don't know anything sort of concrete. In terms of the assets Albion have, who's the, who's the one you'd least like to see, you know, Albion have to sell, if, if you get what I mean? Which one would you like to see them sort of retain out of the players that have got a, a little bit of resale value? I think he, even personally, this one would hurt me, but um, Malumbi, I think, is probably our greatest asset. I mean, for 900,000, we didn't think we were going to get what we got out of him, really. He's been irreplaceable, even against Millwall the other day. We could just tell that we missed him um, then. But um, for Ireland as well, a lot of Ireland fans have been saying how much he's come along. He's only 23, so he's still got a long time in his career. So I think... The Albion will be looking at his age being as young as he is. Um, the, unfortunately, they might be making the most of that and I think he might be the one that they'll be looking to move on. Yeah, and just finally with you, Dave, who sort of, who would be most attractive to other teams? Because other teams don't just look at the quality. They, they look, like Lizzie said, at the age, um, you know, maybe how long they've got left to run on contract. You know, I don't know the Albion contract situation off the top of my head, but... You know, there are players in there that are quality. Um, I've spoken about Yukushlu on the Baggies broadcast, but he's sort of pushing towards 30. Who, who for you is sort of the top assets that Albion have got in there? Not necessarily the ones that they'll sell or might may sell, but who who holds the most value? I think for me, I think they've got a lot more sellable assets than people than people think. I think, um, like, like um, Chloe said earlier, Asante and, and value for money, Asante, um, I was at the open training session on Tuesday, um, and he was last one off the pitch. You, you can just see that he he's just only going to get better. He's only going to improve. Um, you know, he's for me, he's he's, he's twice the player he, he was when he first came to us. So I think I think I think he could be a, a sellable asset. Not obviously not that I would I would sell him <laughs> um, and not not encourage buyers. But um, I think uh, Josh Griffiths, Eng- English goalkeeper, young. Um, the, the price of English players is always over, uh, inflated, um, you know, compared to um, to, to other nationalities. Um, I, I think they've got I think they've got three or four players who um, who would command reasonable fees. But the issue is there's not many teams that buy that buy players anymore. In in reality, um, you, you promoted your three promoted sides. Would they go and spend any money on on any of any of our lot? Uh, I'm I'm not certain they would. Um, obviously, Yukoshlu's played abroad before, um, but again, even even foreign foreign teams, they don't really buy players. So it's all right having sellable assets, but if teams know that you need to sell as well. The price is then driven down. So you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult, difficult times. Yeah, it'd be difficult to see. Just just finally, Adidas, I'll come to all three of you on this one. You mentioned there about clubs in the championship. For you, are there any players that Albion have got that maybe sort of you know, bottom half Premier League teams will look at. Now, the, the example I take is that Wolves paid, you know, I shouldn't mention Wolves on this uh, this show, but Wolves paid 18 mm-hmm. to 20 odd million for Nathan Collins last year when he was relegated with Burnley. He was a championship player. Um, Chloe, what do, do you think there are any players that, you know, I'm sure that they, if Albion did go up, they would be playing for Albion in the Premier League, but yeah. any players say Albion were still in the championship come, come the end of May, um, that some of them sides in the top flight may look at in the Albion squad? Um, I could see them potentially looking at Wallace. Um, I could see um, Yakushlu at a bottom half Premier League side, if I'm honest. I think them two are the two that stand out for me. I think they've got the experience and they've got sort of the quality about them to to work well in the Premier League and adapt to it quite well. Yeah, what about what about you, Dave? I've mentioned before as well, Dar O'Shea, obviously he's got his injury problems at the moment, but he's played in the Premier League. You know, he's he's experienced but still yeah. young is he someone that they might it sounds a bit like I'm touting Albion's players off here to be sold and something, you know, for, doesn't for it? me so. for me one player we've not mentioned yeah uh, uh, double DK sends forward um if if he if he can I think he looks a lot against Millwall he looks he looks a, a different player for me <laughs> come on I don't know what I said to him before the game but he just looks as if he was an angry person I think sometimes he just needs a bit of edge he does like in my opinion um you know, goal scores are really hard to come by. And as a, as a you know, I'm not saying he's an out, an out Premier League striker, but the kid's 23 years old. You know, he probably needs a run of games, needs a little bit of luck. Um, but if, if he goes on a run, he, he's a streaky striker, um, uh, DK. He's, he's proved it at previous clubs. He, you know, you'll see him get six, six and eight, nine and ten. Um, you know, 
So there's there's nine games left um, this year, this season, potentially 13, I think. Um, 13, 12, no, 12, sorry. Uh, if, they, if they go all the way and if he puts a run together, um, lower league, Premier League side potentially could look could look at him. Um, I think the other thing with DK as well is you've got um, a World Cup coming up uh, in a few years' time. It's in his homeland. So, you know, by the time he's, um, you know, 20, what, what will he be? 26, 27, he's going to he's gonna be, he's under contract for five years. He could be a sellable asset. He, you know, he could potentially be America's star boy in uh, at that World Cup. So I think he, he's one to, you know, he could go under the radar a little bit for us as yeah. a sellable asset. Yeah, it's, a, it's another interesting take. What about what about you, Lizzie? Just finally before we we wrap up the show, um, is there any names in there that we haven't mentioned that you know top flight clubs may sort of take a fancy to in the Albion squad? I think it all depends on if they want to go for any of the younger ones. I mean, um, Caleb Taylor's obviously um, coming up at, in Cheltenham. He's doing really well at the moment. Whether they want to look at any of the lone players, Zach Ashworth. Um, they're just going to see what our star players are from the academy. You don't know if they're going to come touting around that. Um, you've got, like Dave says, DK, Thomas Asante, two very different strikers. Um, I think people will look at that depending on their style of play. If any of the lower half teams need a striker like that, someone to score goals, yeah, they'll just be sniffing around. And I think that's the worry at the moment. Yeah, it certainly is. Fantastic stuff. Well, we're almost out of time on the latest Baggies Broadcast fan chat show. This is usually the part of the show um, where I get some score predictions off our three guests uh, ahead of the weekend's game. But there's two this weekend. However, we're going to start going a little bit bigger. We're going to put you on uh, on the spot a little bit more and ask you about the playoffs. Albion have got eight games remaining this season, two massive ones this weekend. But I'm just going to come to you in turn and I want a one-word answer. If you listen to the Baggies broadcast uh, this week, I, I did this to to my uh, my co-host Lewis Cox. I well and truly threw threw him under the bus on this one, asking for a one-word answer. But I'm going to come to you all individually, Lizzie. I'm going to come to you first. Eight games to go. Season finishes early May. Will Albion make the playoffs? Yes or no? No. Right, that's a bad start. That's a bad start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all us pessimistic West Brom fans. Chloe, <laughs> I'll come to you second. Yes or no, will uh, will Corbrand's men make the playoffs? Yeah. There we go. One or Dave, right? You've got the decide, almost like the deciding vote here. Yeah, yes one word no. answer, I'm going to say potentially. Nah, I, 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 I genuinely, I think they will. Uh, yes, I do, yeah. Yes, there we <laughs> go, too. 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. But we've always got to have... There's always a pessimistic Albion fan in there, like we always are, Lizzie. So we've got to have a, have a no. Fantastic. Well, that is your lot on this week's Baggies Broadcast Fan Chat Show. We'll be back in two weeks' time where... where, the, where well, when we'll either be more optimistic um, with the playoffs in sight or it'll be all doom and gloom. And uh, we'll be looking forward to the summer holidays and not the football, hopefully. Um, it's the former and not the latter uh, if you want to come on the Baggies Broadcast fan chat show you can do get in touch on Twitter with me by tweeting me at Johnny Jury underscore star or drop me a DM and I'll get back to you and you can come on and discuss the latest hot topics to come out of the Baggies bag thank you very much to my guests to Dave to Lizzie and to Chloe although you can't see her but she is there until next time on the Baggies Broadcast fan chat show goodbye